Hello and welcome to the brand new series of InCycle, the show bringing you a unique insight into the world of pro cycling. Over the season, we'll bring you all the excitement from the best races and take you behind the scenes with riders and teams. This week, we're in China with some legends of the sport back on their bikes and racing once again. Well, it's uh, definitely you know an experience to be here again, uh, you know, with our old rivals, teammates, and actually you know really looking forward for for the event and yeah, back on spotlight. The last Italian to win Strada Bianchi, Moreno Moza, looks back at his famous 2013 victory. I think Strada Bianchi is uh, probably the best race uh, uh, of the season. But before all of that, we look back at the best of this season's racing action so far. With the cycling season well and truly underway, it's time to look back at some of the best moments you might have missed so far, starting with a new addition to the Women's World Tour calendar, the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race. As wind and rain battered the Victorian coast, the resolve of the day's main five-rider break caused tensions to rise. At 20 kilometres to go, the pressure showed a massive crash split the peloton, leaving just 30 riders left to claw back the leaders. The catch would eventually come, giving the opportunity for Sunweb's Liana Lippert to make her move on the day's final climb of Melville Avenue. Like they protected me the whole day and they played a really um, important role also in the final. I mean, yeah, without my team I couldn't have won this race for sure now. Victoria's usual blue skies returned, but the winds remained for the men's edition the following day. Splits in the bunch would be a recurring theme of the race's early stages. Youngsters Carter Tambell and Elliot Schultz were enjoying their moment in the limelight in the day's longest breakaway. But by the time the race headed into the Geelong circuit, the steep climbs of Chalambra Crescent started to bite the leaders. As the race regrouped on the penultimate ascent of Chalambra, Mitchelton Scott set about blowing the race apart. Looks like Elia Viviani is in the front group. It is Viviani. At bottom right hand yep, corner of your screen. At number one, the blue and the white colours. That is the Italian. Kaylee Buin in there as well. With 2017 winner Jay McCarthy still there, the Australian squad played its next card. A sprinter oh, who won last year, Yates. It had to happen, and he's gone with a terrific acceleration, but they're after him. That was an incredible acceleration by Yates, and all the sprinters have gone in one go. Simon Yates' work was done, but moments later, teammate Daryl Impey was caught napping. A sizzling attack, it was Sivakov. He went on the attack on the left-hand side. The reaction now comes from Denise Devenens. Devenens opens up the sprints. He breaks the drought. Sivakov looks across. Is it Devenens? Threes delivers. Already two, three years, I was really having good legs in this race, each time in front, but holding back, waiting for my sprint, waiting for my sprint. But this time he didn't come back, so yeah, super nice experience. From Australia, the World Tour headed for its next rendezvous, the UAE Tour. With a rich sprinting field, including the likes of Fernando Gaviria and Sam Bennett, stage one in Dubai delivered a ferocious battle between some of the fastest men in the world. Mitchell and Scott in fine spot. Here comes Ackerman. Here comes Ackerman to the line. Bora and Scott will not be denied. For sure, all the big names are here, and I wasn't sure if it's enough for my shape, but now I can say, okay, my shape is good, and now we can take it easy the next days and have a look what is going on the next week. As the race hit the hills for the first time on stage two, the pace proved too high for race leader Pascal Ackerman. And when Victor Campenertz launched an audacious attack with 10 kilometres to go, four-time Tour de France winner Chris Froome showed it was still early days in his return from injury. But with a steep but short sprint to Hatterdam, the sprinters' teams weren't going to be denied. 
It might only be a couple of hundred meters, but it's a long way to the line from here. Here comes Caleb Ewan. Ewan is trying to get around the outside of Bennett. Bennett has to resist and give in on this occasion. It's going to be a double up for Caleb Ewan. With stage three set to be the first battle of the week's general classification war, nerves were clearly high. A summit finish on the testing Jebel Hafit lay ahead. While Caleb Ewan sat up to save energy for the coming days, others, including De Kerning Quicksteps GC Hope James Knox, clearly struggled with soaring temperatures. It would be one of Knox's compatriots, though, who would turn up the heat even further. And this is a massive attack as Adam Yates goes on the attack and tries to put it up to Alexei Luxenko. Look at David go do he grimaces in the effort. Slovenian sensation Tade Pogaccia had missed the move and put his UAE Team Emirates team to work. But unfortunately for the 21-year-old, Adam Yates was just getting started. While Pogacar bridged and passed the chasers, he could make no inroads into a flying Yates lead. I just really wanted to test the legs, and so I attacked, yeah, maybe a little bit too early, but I just committed, and, and if they came back, they came back. Um, but in the end, I, I felt good, and uh, I might stay away. Pogacar would finish more than a minute down, leaving Yates well and truly in the driving seat at the top of the GC. Stage four was earmarked for another sprint finish, leaving the day's two-man break to provide the early entertainment. Forecasts of strong winds had raised the prospect of echelons, but in the end, none materialised, although it did disrupt the sprint train's approach to the finish. Providing clarity through the chaos and on his early season form was Jumbo Visma's Dylan Groenewegen. Bennett launches. Bennett goes and here comes Groenewegen alongside him. It's Bennett against Groenewegen. Groenewegen has it. Here comes Gaviria through to the line, but it's Groenewegen that just about hangs on. With another summit finish on Jebel Hafit, many were looking to make amends for previous mistakes on stage five. Most notably, James Knox, after his meltdown on the same climb two days prior, launched a daring attempt at the stage win after a day in the breakaway. With the chasers biding their time behind, the Cumbrian had nearly 90 seconds to play with until the GC battle ignited. It's going, it's all happening. The attacks are coming from the front and it had to happen, didn't it? And he's rolled over the right of the back of it. Adam Yates immediately responds to the attack from Tade Pogacar. A series of attacks from a lead group of five rapidly closed Knox's gap, ending his brave bid for a stage win with three kilometers to go. As Yates shut down any threat to his overall lead, an exciting finale on the narrow route to the finish was guaranteed. This is the second that's going to take them up towards the line, gets on the pedals for Gatcher, wants to give it one last go. Who got it? Well, it's Enko is throwing the, his arms in, in celebration. But I think Pogacar could well have got that one. An embarrassing moment for Lutsenko gifting the stage to Pogacar, but one ultimately forgotten in the drama of the following hours as the remainder of the race was cancelled in light of suspected cases of COVID-19 in the race entourage, leaving Adam Yates as the overall winner of an unforgettable UAE tour. From the Middle East to the season's first taste of Flanders at Omloop Het Nieuwsblad and cycling's unofficial opening weekend. Rather than the cobbled sections that often define Flemish racing, it would be the steep paved climbs of the Leiberg and Reckelberg that would shape the race. Sunweb's Soren Krah Andersen's attack on the latter with 73 kilometers to go was followed by unlikely winners in Tim de Klerk, Frederick Frisson and Jonas Rutsch. 
but when four more riders bridged over, the lead bunch looked like it might deliver the day's victor. Among them, CCC's Matteo Trentin, Jasper Steuven of Trek Segafredo, and De Kerning Quickstep's Yves Lampert. With such firepower, the lead group streaked away from the weary chasers behind, setting up a showdown on the Moor van Gerardsbergen. Lampard on the left-hand side, Sturva on the right, and now Kao is losing ground. It's the two Flemish riders going head-to-head. -head. As Krau Andersen recovered ground on the descent, Matteo Trentin would not be so lucky. The Italian unable to close the agonizingly small gap on the Bosberg. And so the lead trio would duke out the finale in the streets of Ninova. It's Sturven on the left as we look at it now. Lompard on the right trying to come around him. Sturven has his nose in front for the moment. Lompard can't do it. And Jasper Sturven is going to win day one of opening weekend. We were really uh, with a good group and uh, we finished the season uh, good last year uh, with uh, Mess getting world champion. And uh, we really were motivated to uh, keep this vibe going. And I think uh, we proved today that uh, it worked out pretty well. Back in December 2019 in Shanghai's Xingpu district, some of the best to ever ride a bike came together. The occasion? A unique event reuniting the likes of the Schleck brothers and Alberto Contador in competition once again. The first ever a Giro d'Italia ride like a pro promised a cultural exchange of Italy's greatest race. Well, it's uh, definitely, you know, an experience to be here again, uh, you know, with our old rivals, teammates, and actually, you know, really looking forward for for the event and yeah, back on spotlight. In our time, we didn't really race a lot in China and you know, there was one race, but you see that cycling is growing here and uh, you know, getting more and more popular and um, definitely uh, excited. For me, it was incredible, no? When I saw the, the list of the ex-professional uh, cyclists, it's a dream team. You cannot really, you cannot do this in the other part of the world. Joining Contador and the Schlecks would be six other pairs of monument winners, Giro victors and world champions. I think we are in the same condition, no? Uh, to do the race. My, my condition is perfect. Mine is also the yes, same. <laughs> It feels good. It takes me back to when we were in the Olympic team together in the road race and, uh, and various world championships, so it's, it's good to be together. Yeah, oh, you know, the head butts and the elbows are long gone. Now it's um, catch up and have a laugh and, and uh, enjoy each other's company. I'm pretty excited about this event. Uh, just kind of it's a very unique event that I've never really heard of, this sort of uh, concept. And uh, once they reached out to me about doing it, I was pretty intrigued and I've uh, never been to Shanghai, so Got to knock out two birds with one stone, and I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what Sunday will bring us. With Chinese races on both the men's and women's World Tour calendars, the country has never held a greater stake in the sport than it does today. The local fans' appreciation of riders who spent most of their racing careers thousands of miles away in Europe points to a genuine boom in understanding and enjoyment of racing in China over the last decade. We feel... Uh, uh, for the Chinese people, we are like an idol, so that is that is the good feeling we, we got from the people because they look the the Giro d'Italia and all the races we do in the past and uh, they look uh, to us. For me, it's the first time in Shanghai, the second to the China, but uh, I, I like it because the uh, the cyclist is uh, is good, a good passion, and uh, for, uh, for the Italian coming here, I think is very interesting. What's the most important is uh, that we really uh, are able to, to share this cycling passion with, yeah, to leave something behind here in Shanghai. Since this is a world premium one time only. I think it's really nice to be a part of a sport that's growing in China, not only in participation, but in popularity. They've got a whole lot of races here, lots of uh, professional tours, 
So it's good to be part of that and, and maybe add to what's on the, the rise here in China. Important to that rise has been events like Giro d'Italia Ride Like a Pro. Over the course of two days, some 3,000 locals of all ages had the chance to take part in races and non-competitive rides on closed roads. Topping off this festival of pedal power, though, would be the hotly anticipated Legends Race. A peloton of eight teams, each led by two legends of the sport and supported by three Chinese teammates, set out on the 70-kilometre route. Riding out from the National Convention and Exhibition Centre, the peloton would make the turn at the spectacular Rainbow Bridge. By here, an elite group had formed with the likes of Pipo Pozzato, Alberto Contador and double Giro stage winner Max Lely all clearly enjoying themselves. Also among them was local rider Chen Long, who hit out with Lely in an audacious move. While that break was doomed to fail, the pressure led to multiple splits in the bunch. In the final kilometres, it would be Contador launching a winning solo move from the front group, and El Pistolero fired off his trademark celebration once again. From the first moment, I feel uh, very good. It's true that I train in every week, uh, some days. But uh, yeah, I feel, I feel good. I try to stay in all the breakaway. And also my teammates, Ivan Basso, helped to me. And yeah, the final I can take the victory is very special, no? because it's the first victory in China for me. With its rolling Tuscan hills, white gravel roads and iconic finish into Siena's old town, Strada Bianchi has quickly become one of the most celebrated races on the cycling calendar. However, to date, only one male Italian rider has taken a home victory in the Piazza del Campo, former Cannondale man Moreno Moza. I think Strade Bianca is uh, probably, yeah, I think it's probably the best race uh, uh, of the season. I think it's one of the only races that when you're racing it, you can a little bit enjoy even the landscape, the, the place. Because normally, when you're in the race, you, you don't see anything. You join us live here at the Strada Bianchi, the seventh running of the great event. We have four riders, as you can see, in our escape group. Their maximum gap back to the chasers was nine minutes, very, very quick order as well. When I won Strade Bianche, it was uh, my second race of the year. And I was coming uh, directly through the altitude uh, camp in Teide. And I, I came here and uh, I, I have a condition that I didn't expect to have. Strade Bianche is a lot more for climbers than for climbers. There's uh, a lot more of uh, uh, elevation gain. I mean, yeah, Cancellara won it two, three times, but Cancellara was another story. <laughs> For sure, at the start, I wouldn't believe that I could win. I remember the meeting before the race when uh, the director, uh, Shirea, uh, said uh, that for sure Sagan was the captain, but uh, if there was opportunity, I could uh, play my cards and maybe try to attack uh, in the final or the last, the, the last 20Ks. Cancellara did an attack, and we remained like uh, 15 riders, and then Cancellara stops, start, everybody starts to look around, and I just take the opportunity, I attack. Cancellara and Sagan, they are brutalizing poor old Fletcher. <laughs> oh my goodness. Now then, what about this for a move? 
Check him out. Moser. Get your range. Moser turns on the gas and just decides to stretch his legs here. Oh, poor old Fletcher here has been bitten. Of course, everybody was looking for Peter and they let me go. Here, thank you. There goes Fletcher and here comes Moser. He's kicked him away at the moment. I have to be honest, I don't remember anything of <laughs> what the, the director was saying in the radio. Yeah. People screaming, a lot of noise, but uh, I don't remember what, what it was saying. I was crazy. Yeah, I was crazy. Moser has a look. Now then, he's reaching a little bit of a plateau. Can Moser just take the final couple of burn, bends and break some hearts here? This will be an amazing victory for him if he does. He's out of the sun and he's gone. Moser's picked it up and he's just spinning away here. He's got it, I think. Oh, this is amazing. I was expecting to be probably the first 10 position, but not, not to win, so I don't know. I, I was not even sure that uh, it was the finish. Maybe it was another lap. <laughs> Hundred meters to go. Here comes our champion, Moreno Moza gets the roar. What a piece of skill. What a piece of endeavor. He has made this happen. And if you needed any kind of confirmation about what Canada have got, Sagan crosses the line in second place, a one-two for them. I probably cried a little bit, I don't, I don't remember, probably, yeah. Everything in the race is really iconic and um, the thing that permits to this really young race to became immediately uh, super classic. Yeah. Probably Sale Bianca it's a most beautiful race. Yeah. And I'm happy to be the only Italian who won. <laughs> That's it for this edition, but do join us next time. Until then, keep up to date on social media.